Hello, I'm Monica Samuels. I'm the National Sake Sales Manager for Vine Connections. I'm very excited that you'll be working with sake. Uh, sake and seafood is something that I'm seeing all over the country and it's a really great way to enhance your diner's already very good experience at Ocean Air. So today I'd like to talk about the three new sakes that you're introducing into your menu and we'll talk a little bit about misconceptions that people have about sake, some tips on service and tasting sake, and we'll go a little more in depth on these three sakes. I work all around the country introducing sake in different restaurants and I've encountered a lot of objections and confusion about what sake is. I think that most people when they first tried sake it's been very very hot, hotter than a cup of coffee in a white ceramic carafe, they drink it out of a very small ceramic cup, usually drink pretty quickly like a shot or maybe dropped in a beer and it's not something that people think very hard about or treat like a fine beverage. So I think that reintroducing people to sake is very important and making people understand that it's a premium sake is, is also very important. So all of our sakes we recommend serve chilled in a wine glass. One of the most common misconceptions that I hear from people is that sake is very high in alcohol. I think because it's a clear liquid people associate it more with a vodka or a gin than a wine or a beer and because people are used to drinking it in very very small cups maybe drinking it as a shot. Sake is actually much closer to wine and alcohol content than liquor. It's between about 14 to 16 percent on average. And in the context of alcohol, sake is actually a lot easier on your body than you would think. Sake is gluten-free, sulfite-free, has no tannins. Traditional sakes have no measurable residual sugar, and they're very low in tartaric acid. So sake gets a bad reputation for being a hangover-causing beverage, but it's actually quite the opposite. Another misconception about sake would be serving hot versus cold. So the big difference between table sake and premium sake is the polishing of the rice. Sake rice is very different from rice that you eat. And so with sake rice, all the starch is concentrated in the center of the grain. Everything on the outside are proteins and fats and other properties that will make the sake taste harsh. The more you remove those outer layers of rice, the smoother the sake gets and the more you expose the flavor and aroma. The last misconception that I often hear is that sake is just for sushi. I always tell people that I eat more sushi in America than I do in Japan. In Japan, sushi is considered to be a special occasion only kind of food and people eat a lot more fish, grilled fish, pork, beef, chicken, and simmered vegetables. Sake, because it doesn't have tannins and it's very low in acidity, it's really meant to harmonize with a lot of different flavors and so it can be a lot of fun to play around with sake and you'll rarely find an instance where sake clashes with a flavor. Alright, so let's talk about bringing sake to the table. When you present a bottle of sake to a table, I always like to show them where the English translation of the name is that corresponds with the way that the sake is listed on the menu. We've created an English translation for each of our sakes that tells a little bit about the story and history behind the brewery and this particular sake. For example, with this first sake, Wandering Poet, one, this brewery is called Rihaku, which is named after a famous Chinese poet. The poet Rihaku used to drink lots and lots of sake and then write beautiful poetry, generally about sake. And we actually have a quote from Rihaku that says, the poet Rihaku would drink a big bottle of sake and write a hundred poems. So, Wandering Poet is an easy name to remember. I always like to, because sake is a screw cap, you don't have to worry about bringing a corkscrew to the table, and you also don't have to worry about the sake being corked. However, I think it's a very nice courtesy to pour a taste for the person who's ordered the sake. Like wine, sake definitely evolves in the glass. We feel it's very important to serve sake in a wine glass because as the sake aerates, it really evolves and develops different aromas, and especially as you're pairing it with different food, it's really interesting to see the complexity of the sake. So I like to, like wine, take a sniff, put a little air into the sake, revisit it. For me, this sake has a lot of green elements. I get a lot of green banana, maybe plantain, a little aloe, a little lemongrass, and the sake is incredibly round and rich in the mouth. This is one of my favorite sakes to pair with 
ingredients that have a little bit of bitterness or vegetal aromas. Uh, East Coast oysters can some, sometimes be very briny and have a little bit of a green flavor. And so sake, this sake in particular, is one of my favorite pairings with East Coast oysters. I also noticed that you have a fried asparagus dish on the, on the menu. Fried asparagus can be a very challenging pairing when you're thinking of wine, but this is one of my favorite asparagus pairings. The next sake I'd like to taste with you is Tears of Dawn. Tears of Dawn is a daiginjo, which is the most elegant and refined classification of sake. To be in this category, the sake rice must be polished to at least 50% of the outer grain remaining. Sakes in this category are ultra luxurious and highly refined. Tears of Dawn is from a brewery called Konteki, which is in Kyoto, which is one of the oldest and most historic regions of Japan. When you first take a whiff of konteki, you might notice some fennel and anise aromas. This is a very common characteristic of highly polished sake rice. I think after you get the fennel and anise, I get a lot of tropical fruit, particularly very ripe banana and a little bit of clove and spice. The finish is very silky and very creamy. One of my favorite pairings with this sake are shellfish that are, that are a little more sweet and succulent and have a creamy texture. Maybe some seared scallops, butter poached lobster, or even west coast oysters that have a nice creamy finish and a little bit of a melon, like kumamoto's or kushis. The third sake on the menu is Snow Maiden. You might notice that the color of the sake is a little different. This sake has some of the natural solids from fermentation still in the liquid. After fermentation, there is a process where the liquids are separated from the solids, and in this case, some of the rice and yeast are left in the bottle. Because of gravity, some of the sediment does settle to the bottom, so when you are serving the sake, please remember to give it a shake. This sake is called Tozai. Uh, tozai means East meets West, and it's a collaboration between our company and a very small brewery in Kyoto. The image that we've chosen to represent Tozai is the koi fish, which is a very powerful image in Japan. This name, Snow Maiden, actually refers to one of the, the longest living koi fish in Japan who, that lived to be over 220 years old. We also have some very traditional Japanese origami patterns, which are a kind of signature to the Kyoto region of Japan. This sake smells so much like very juicy honeydew melon. There's a very bright, fruity quality about the nose. And a surprisingly dry finish. People love nigori because of the rich, full texture that's unlike almost any other beverage that you can drink. And the, the creaminess really stands up very well to spiciness. I noticed that you had some sweet chili calamari on the menu, as well as some spicy tuna poke. I would love to pair the sake with either of those, or maybe the tequila shrimp ceviche. Offering people sake as part of their meal is a great way to give your, your guests an experience that they won't forget. A small bottle of sake can be a great way to start the evening to segue into a bottle of wine later with entrees, especially if a table's ordering a red wine. It can seem really appropriate to have a small bottle of sake with some oysters and raw bar and ceviche and then move into a bottle of red with the entrees. Just to remember a few serving tips, when you're presenting sake at the table, Always remember to direct them towards the English name that corresponds with the way it's listed on the menu. Tell them the polishing rate, and if you forget, there's a little cheat sheet on the back. We also have some tasting notes on the back to remind you as well.
I think Ocean Air has done a really great job picking three sakes that are approachable, accessible, stand alone from each other, and really complement a seafood-centric menu. I'm very excited to see how it all goes. Thank you so much for your time and your support. I'm Monica, and if I can ever be of assistance, please let me know.